Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and thank you to my 330 subscribers who have been waiting around for this video. I'm sure you have it, but I'm sorry that I have been MIA for a little bit. I am hoping to upload more frequently from now on, so please stay tuned. For this video today, I'll be showing you how to make this super duper cute top. It is also very easy to make, and so let's get started. For this DIY, you will need the following raw materials. About one yard of a lightweight fabric. I'll be using this cotton. Some matching thread to your fabric, some 3 8 inch elastics, and some elastic threads. First up is taking measurements and noting them down. To get accurate measurements, I wear a sports bra. You can also wear a tank top that hooks you well. I'm using this thin tape to make a few guidelines. I've linked the tape I'm using down below. You can also use any other type of thin tape or cut what you already have down to size. Whatever you do, don't use duct tape, scotch tape that's invisible, or a sex tape. First, you're going to place a piece of tape down your center front, like so. Next, you're going to place another piece of tape underneath your bust, all the way to the side seam of your top. If your top doesn't have one, you can just eyeball it to the middle of your armpit. Next, place a line where you want the top to start at. Next, starting from where I want the strap to end, I place a tape down perpendicular to the previous line I created, down to about where I want the armhole to be, and then place another perpendicular tape to that point. And we're done with taping our body. Here are the measurements that you want to take down. First is the top of your bust, the bottom of your bust. Next, from the top of your bust down to where the armhole will be. And then from that point to the side seam. And then from the side seam, back to the center front. I forgot to film this part, but you also want a measurement from the bottom of your bust down to where your natural waist is. Now it's time to start drafting the pattern pieces. Here are the pattern pieces that we will be creating, and because this top is symmetrical, we want to draft half of it and then cut it on the fold. I am so sorry for the video quality here. I'm using a new camera because my one broke and did not focus it. But I think you can see what I'm doing, right? Okay, first draw a line down the middle. This is your center front. And then using the measurement A, I'm just drawing or indicating where that measurement is on that line. Mine's about five and a quarter. I'm a size extra small, but this is so elastic that I can fit an extra small to small, maybe a medium. Next, I'm just measuring where E is from A, which is the measurement between the underbust to your waist. And the next line you want to make is the B line, or I mean the D line, and that's going to be 1.75 times the measurement that you have taken before. And draw that line perpendicular to the dot that you have marked before. There we go. And then the next step is to just make a rectangle from the measurement that you had before. And as you know, a rectangle has four uh, right corner size. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. All right, let's make that triangle. Oh wait, I mean rectangle, oh my God. Please forgive me, it's like 6 a.m. here. All right, from the top of your rectangle, you want to measure down the measurement B, mark a dot there, and then for measurement C, you want to times it by 1.25 and draw a line from the previous dot. And again, make that rectangle. All right, next, go over 1.5 inch. This is the width of the strap that we're going to be using. If you want to make bigger, feel free. And also going down 1.5 inches down from the center front. And if you want to make that lower, go ahead. No one's stopping you. All right, now it is time to join the 
markings that we had before. You can use a French ruler here or use freehanded, whatever you want. A small side note, I'm just demonstrating how I drew the pattern here. It is not in any way correct in terms of ratio and so if yours turn out to be looking a little bit different than this, don't worry, your measurement is your true source. Now it is time to draw more lines. So just draw a straight line across here and then I'm going to go down two inches which is the size of the peplum at the bottom. If you want yours to be longer or shorter, go ahead, do whatever you want. And the front piece is done. I'm just making a label here so I remember what it is in case it isn't absolutely obvious that this is the front piece. And next I'm just drawing in more labels such as this is where I'm gonna put on the fold when I cut out a fabric. Where the grain line is. This isn't absolutely necessary but I like to be extra. Um, yeah. Alright, and then last but not least for this front piece is to add the seam allowance. I will be adding a half inch here, but feel free to whichever to use whichever seam allowance that suits your fancy. Alright, the super duper hard part is over. Now let's do the easy part where we're just gonna draw rectangles. So for the back panel, I'm just gonna use the same height as indicated here and use the same width as the front piece that I had drawn before and that's pretty much it. Add in all the necessary labels and seam allowances and we're done. Oh wait, I spoke too soon. You want to also copy the under the bust line, also the waistline to the back piece. You will need this later. I'm not going to draw it here, but for the lining pieces, all you have to do is copy the front and the back like this, and you have all your pieces. Oh, don't forget the straps. <laughs> so I went ahead and drafted all the pieces onto this butcher paper that I got here. You can also use discounted gift wrap paper which I've seen people use or you know buy actual drafting paper that has all these awesome grid lines on there that is super useful for drafting clothing but I am too cheap to get some and so butcher paper it is for me plus I just really like the color also and it has many other uses such as like uh drawing uh using for actual wrapping meats and stuff well here you can see me drafting everything using the measurements a little note cut a little notch on all the horizontal lines that we have drawn before um, this would help you with the shirring later on here are all the pattern pieces in all their glory I didn't create a pattern for the strap because it's literally just rectangles, like wrong rectangles. I just made a note to myself to cut them out. And here is me cutting out pattern pieces and there's not much to it. Alright, on to the next step. On the right side of your main fabric, just connect the two notches that you had made earlier. Do this for both of the front piece and the back piece. Alright, now it is time to get to the sewing part. All you have to do is sew the side seams together for the main fabric and the lying fabric. I'm just using a regular stitch here at 2.5 in length and it's pretty easy. Just sew it down to a straight line. Once you finish that for the outer layer, just fold the hem twice over and sew that down. For the lining hem, you just have to fold it once over, and that's it. 
next let's work on a strap just fold that over right side together and sew along the edge leaving the bottom open so that we can flip it over once we're done before flipping it over make sure to clip the corner like this so that we reduce any extra bulk and we get some nice clean sharp corner and i'm using this half chopstick to flip it over but you can use whichever tool that fits you once that is done i'm using this corner or point turner here that i got you don't need this i am just being extra but it gives me this really really sharp corner and i really like that so i'm doing it Ooh, look at how nice and sharp that is now it is time to press when i first started sewing i hated this step because i was like i am sewing why am i pressing and pressing just took a lot of time because i had to take out my iron board take out the iron plug it in press everything which can be a lot sometimes but i've come to learn to love pressing because that's what makes my project looks so much better and more professional than when I didn't press it down. So yes, press down all your seams. And so out here, I'm just pressing out all the seams I have created before, which are the side seams, the hems, and the straps. Look at it. Isn't that so nice? Okay, it's sandwich time. Not that sandwich, but sandwiching the layers. But on that note, I sh probably should have stopped here and ate something because I think by this point, I was like, haven't eaten for the last eight hours. But yeah, maybe when I want to go on a diet, I just sew a lot. And so I just forget about eating and drinking, hydration. Yeah, so here I'm just sandwiching the outer layer and the inner layer together and making sure all my seams and lines line up and once i have that done i'm just going to place the straps in between the two layers making sure that the straps are perpendicular to the seams or parallel to the side seams Once that is all done, just sew around the edge. For this next step, all you have to do is to clip the seam allowance to reduce the bulk. And for the curves, you also want to make these snips so that it helps ease into the armhole. But honestly, I don't think you need to do this for this project because what I used was so light and if you're using light fabric it doesn't matter because the curve is so slight anyways time for more pressing just press down the curve that I mean the seam that you just so yep okay next so another line that is half an inch from the edge but make sure to leave space at the end okay so here's a pro tip at least I think it's pro because no one told me about this in any of the YouTube video that I watch to learn how to sew. They just tell you to measure elastic to your measurement, add in some seam allowance and that's it. And when I did that and put the clothing on, it's always much bigger than I had measured it out to be. And the reason is braided elastics actually get elongated when you stretch it. And so if you pre-stretch it, it is at its final resting length. Uh, so yes, stretch out your elastic before you measure your measurements. Now it is time to thread it through. I'm using this tool here that I got with a set of... Uh, I don't know what they're called. Oh, that's my picture here. Uh, yeah, those things. Um, but you can use safety pins or a bobbin pin. No one needs to have fancy tools here. Once it is out on the other side, I attach it together using a safety pin 
and I also tried on just to double check that the elastic is the right length and it was yay and before I sew the elastic together I just went through to make sure that the elastic is not twisted throughout the tunnel once that is done I just sew that down here I'm just using the hand crank to make sure that I have it all together in the right spot just be careful when you sew elastics. I find it to be very difficult, um, but make sure you put in a lot of seams to make sure that the elastic doesn't come loose while you're wearing it. And it would remove any frustration and headaches later on because you need to fix it. It's a lot of seam ripping and none of us like seam ripping. Once that is done, just close the tunnel and you're all set for this part. And now it's sharing time. I was actually kind of nervous for this part because if you watch one of my previous videos, I had a tough time doing this. But here we go. Hopefully I learned something from last time. So first you want to wound your bobbin by hand and make sure you don't put tension while you are wounding it. I would recommend wounding a few bobbins to get an extra just so that you can waste time later on to wound a bobbin while you're sewing and you just pop it in like a regular bobbin I did a few tests sharing just in case I needed to change tension and anything but I actually forgot to change the thread length to 5 and didn't realize that and the test piece worked out fine so I just kept it at 2.5 but I know that other people recommend to increase your stitch length and here's the moment of truth so make sure that your camisole is facing right side up I made this mistake last time on my previous project and I had to unpick two rows of shirring and that was not fun trust me start your shirring at one of the seams side seams and make sure that your lining is being caught underneath and it should be if you did everything correctly and if not that's okay um, but you should be starting a line that you had drawn earlier based on the notch that you had put on the pattern and start sharing away and to my surprise this process went so much better than last time I'm not sure why but I have a good guess is that I got a new sewing machine so that helps so, so much. So once you reach the end of your row, just pick up your presser foot, pivot 90 degrees, go down to the next row, and then pivot another 90 degrees and start the next row. This way you don't have to keep tying the elastics like I did in the last project, which is so much better and waste so much less time. Keep an eye out on your bobbin just in case your elastic runs out and when it does that's okay just cut off the top thread and for the bottom just make sure that you have enough elastics to tie to the next row and so here I'm just unpicking some of the seams to get a better grip on the elastic when I tie it next while on your bobbin or your extra just pop it into the machine and start your next row and once you have created a few inches just go back and tie the two elastics together and you should be all set happy shirring and here is the final result isn't she so cute and lovely and by she i do not mean me the shirt anyways thank you for watching and if you like what you've seen please like and subscribe and if you make the shirt, please tag me on the social. Until next time, bye.